Independent Senator from Vermont and Chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Senator Bernie Sanders. Good to have you here. Bernie, always great to have you with us and great to see you again. Um, the rich keep getting richer, the poor keep getting poorer. It's happened through the Obama administration, it's happened through the Bush administration. You can keep going all the way back, I guess, to the Nixon administration. You can't blame it on one president or one party. This is systemic. How do we break that cycle and rebuild the middle class? Great question. Uh, I think for a start, um, we have to take a look at uh, unfettered free trade. Trade policies, by the way, which have been supported by Republicans and Democrats, would say that it's okay to shut down plants in America and move to China. Uh, we have lost some 60,000 factories, millions of decent paying jobs in the last 14 years. We have to stop the assault on trade unions and make it easier for workers to enjoy their constitutional right to organize when you attack unions and, and prevent workers from collective bargaining you're going to drive wages uh, down we've got to raise the minimum wage in this country to a living wage at least 10 10 an hour i would go further than that joe we need with our infrastructure crumbling our roads and bridges a massive federal jobs program to put people back to work putting one trillion dollars in rebuilding our infrastructure creates 13 million decent paying jobs we need pay equity for women mm. not where women are getting 77 cents on a dollar for men if you do those things it's a start in rebuilding the middle class is in this, this a solely republican problem cause problem or is there also a problem with establishment dc democrats it is both parties but i think it is more the republican party uh as you well know uh, we have tried in the senate to pass legislation to raise the minimum wage. We've tried a jobs program. We've tried pay equity. Yeah. We've tried to get rid of this disastrous Citizens United decision, which allows billionaires to buy elections. Moving forward with the constitutional amendment, in every single instance, we were filibustered by the Republicans. So what about um, the first couple of years the president uh, had an almost filibuster-proof Senate? What happened then? Was there a missed opportunity for a lot of these progressive causes you're talking about? The answer is, I think so. Yeah. Uh, but I think, on the other hand, let's not forget, Joe, where we were six years ago. Right. We were, had a financial system which is on the verge of collapse. We were losing 700,000 jobs a month. We were in two wars. We were losing troops in combat. Um, so we've come some way. I mean, the, the situation today yeah. economically is better. Clearly, we have a long, long way to go. Okay, John Hammond. So assume that, uh, for the sake of argument, assume that uh, Republicans take control of the Senate. Um, more dysfunctional in that scenario, or conceivably is there a way in which it might be less dysfunctional than it currently is? Well, I think the issue is not dysfunctional. The issue is what happens. Mm -hmm. In my view, let me lay it right out on the Joe may disagree with me, but I'll tell you exactly what I think will happen. There will be attacks on Social Security through a so-called chain CPI. There will be an attempt to end Medicare as we know it. There will be massive cuts in Medicaid, uh, in nutrition programs, uh, in education. We will not see action on rebuilding our infrastructure. And there will be more tax breaks for the rich and large corporations. But, but the president's not going to sign any of those bills, right? I would surely hope not. I would surely hope not. And so you would think that Republicans who understood that might think that going into a presidential election year that there would be no benefit to p passing a bunch of legislation that the president was going to be. Well, veto. you might think a lot of things, but some of our Republican colleagues chose to shut down the United States government. We have engaged, they have engaged, in hundreds and hundreds of filibusters. You know, one of the things I think people don't appreciate, there was once a time in American history where a majority vote ruled in the United States Senate. You got 51 votes, you pass something. You can't get anything of substance through right now without 60 votes because the Republicans have changed the rules. So, Senator, uh, just specifically, when we look at what's going on in Vermont and minimum wage there, over the summer there was legislation that was right. passed that's going to phase in right. uh, the fact that payment, minimum wage payments are going to go up to this easing until we get to the year of 2019 when it's going to be indexed to inflation. By that point, it's going to be around 1050. So why can't you look at what's taking place in your home state, carry some of these ideas back to D.C. and say, why don't we index minimum wage to inflation? That's the legislation that we brought forth in the Senate. It, uh, and raise it to 10, 10 and then to index it. And but why can't you get other people to come on board when you can <laughs> when you can show successes that have happened? In Thomas, I don't want to break the bad news here. I don't okay. really want to upset you or shock you. There are some people in the United States Congress who could care less about working people or low-income people. Their job is to represent the wealthy and large corporations. Big money does not want to raise the minimum wage. 
and a lot of people follow that lead. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we've started to notice, and we we noticed from Mitt Romney, uh, other other Main Street Rob Republicans, Portman. Rob Portman, of course, um, also the former governor of Minnesota, Tim yep. Pawlenty that are now saying, yeah, let's Good. raise the minimum wage. We need to raise the minimum wage. Mitt Romney just told us the other night, we need to raise the minimum Good. wage and we need to index it to inflation. Well, that's um, a good sign, John. I mean, it is a good yeah. sign. I mean, don't you think, you talked about the government shutdown. I have noticed from my Republican friends that that was almost an icebreaker and almost a wake-up call for a lot of Republicans to say, hey, wait a second. We're not just going to fight absolutely everything. Have you noticed over the past year any movement at all? I hope that you're right, but to be honest with you, I haven't noticed it. You know, I'm chairman of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and working with John McCain, working with Republicans, we actually got a halfway decent yeah. bill through. But that is very much the exception uh, to the rule. Okay. Bernie, thank you so much. Senator you're right. I, you, you, you're running for president, right? I'm giving thought to it. <laughs> thought to it. Okay, very well, what, what, good. What's your, what's your current thinking about it? Well, my current thinking is, can you run a successful campaign taking on the billionaire class and the enormous sums of money that would be thrown against somebody who wants to stand up for working families? Are you, say, are you saying you would only run if you thought there was a reasonable chance of winning? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay, coming Thank up. Thank you, Senator. Greatly appreciate you John being here, Zoe.